This is Keep the Faith Ministry News. I'm Hal Mayer. The Republican Party at the Republican National Convention has adopted the most conservative platform ever, and it has Christian conservatives cheering it, partly because it is the most pro-life platform ever. It also continued opposition to homosexual marriage and formal opposition to bathroom choice for transgender people. The official platform also has new language that took aim at same-sex parenting. Children raised in a traditional two-parent household tend to be physically and emotionally healthier, less likely to use drugs and alcohol, engage in crime, or become pregnant outside of marriage. And while Donald Trump has been reluctant to embrace social conservative positions in some cases, such as bathroom choice, the platform lets stand language that attacks the Obama administration for its pressure on schools to allow transgender students to use restrooms and other facilities that match their gender identities rather than their biological sex. Their edict to the states concerning restrooms, locker rooms, and other facilities is at once illegal, dangerous, and ignores privacy issues. We salute the several states which have filed suit against it, reads the platform. Tony Perkins, the head of the Family Research Council and a GOP platform committee member, called the new platform without question the most conservative he can remember, noting that the platform guides policymaking at every level of American politics. It has great significance, he added. The new platform embraces Trump's call for securing the southern border. The border wall must cover the entirety of the southern border, reads the updated platform, which adds the presence of millions of unidentified individuals in this country poses grave risks to the safety and sovereignty of the United States. On trade, the platform also embraces Trump's position. We need better negotiated trade agreements that put America first, it reads. But the platform addresses other key conservative issues like pornography, defending Israel, opposition to anti-gun legislation, defeating terrorism, among other things. Trump has promised Christians they will have more power if he is elected president. And it appears that the GOP is supporting him. Those who understand Bible prophecy can see clearly where this will lead. Combine the current political environment in America with the ecumenical movement that has muted the Protestant voice of the churches, uniting them around Rome on socially conservative issues, and you have a potent prophetic mix. Where is all this heading? When the leading churches of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their institutions, then Protestant America will have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. That's Great Controversy, page 445. Now think about this. Imagine the strategy of the Prince of Evil. First, the enemy places a man in office of the U.S. President, that takes the United States strongly to the left and promoting socially progressive issues to the max. This stirs a reaction, and then he brings in a president that promotes strong socially conservative issues that Christians want, and then gives more power to the churches who are determined never to let the nation go back to its liberal extremes. Will they implement worship laws as described in Revelation 13? Are we near the end? This is Keep the Faith Ministry News. Thank you for watching.